Hey guys, welcome back to Metallomaniac's Hangout. Today we're going to look at some of my favourite Mega Drive games, so let's get to it. Back in the 90s, though there were other consoles out there, the question was, and to some extent still is, Mega Drive or Super Nintendo? For me, it was the Mega Drive, and I got to play so many great games for the system and discovered so many more in my later years, so I've made a little list of some of my favourites. I've always been a Michael Jackson fan and loved the Moonwalker movie as a kid, so much that my parents bought me the game for the MOS system. I eventually played it on the Mega Drive and was amazed by how much better it looked and sounded. The Mega Drive version also has a two player mode which sounds great at first but it's really just taking turns and competing to see who can get the furthest before losing all your lives. Another addition to the Mega Drive version is the ability to become Mecha Michael once you come into contact with a shooting star. This lets you fly around the stage and take out all the enemies with lasers and see where the children are trying to hide from you. You can't kidnap the kids until you turn back into regular MJ, but at least you know where they are. There's no running now. The difficulty shoots up a fair bit once you hit the wood stage and with just three lives it can be a bit of a challenge to finish. I feel that a lot of games from this generation were like this to give you your money's worth. It just takes a lot of practice I guess. I prefer Toe Jam & Earl in Panic on Funkatron over the original as it's more of your traditional 16-bit platformer. To me, this feels and looks very early 90s. The vibrant colours, text and menus remind me of the shows I used to watch on Nickelodeon like Saved by the Bell and Clarissa Explains It All. That's my childhood right there. The gameplay is simple, which is always a good thing. Round up the dirty human tourists and send them back to their own stinking planet, rinse and repeat. My favourite parts of the game are the mid-level mini-games like the Martian Sponge Olympics and the Boombox Beat Challenge. It's nice to have things like this that take away from the main gameplay to mix things up. The soundtrack is amazing too, it has got to be one of the best soundtracks on the Mega Drive. I've never really invested in funk music but by god is this great. I should stick this on my iPod. Gunstar Heroes was Treasure's first release. They went on to develop games such as McDonald's Treasure Land Adventure, Dynamite Heady, Radiant Silver Gun and Ikaruga. The game is a run and gun shooter, a genre I've never really delved much into. You can choose from one of four weapons and then pair it up with another by picking up weapon drops during the stage. You can choose in which order you play the stages which is a nice option. I like to do the ones I suck at first. It's really just some of the boss fights that get me as it's tough to find the spots where you can safely avoid their attacks. It's very fast paced and somewhat challenging. You will die, unless you're a full on pro, but you have unlimited continue so you will get through this, eventually. The game isn't exactly cheap but for some reason the classic collection where it's bundled with three other games is cheaper than buying the game on its own. Still, that price has gone up quite a bit since I bought it, but the game is also available on the Wii Virtual Console, PS3, although I'm unsure if it's still on the PlayStation Network, PlayStation 2, Xbox Live, again, I'm unsure if it's still on there, 3DS and Steam. Whichever way suits you best, you really should play this game, and it's only 2 quid on Steam, just saying. Now, I will admit, for convenience and quality, I used an emulator and an Xbox 360 pad to capture footage for this and my butt was placed upon my hands. I used to be great at this game back in the day on my Mega Drive with my 6 button controller. Bearing in mind I used to knock the difficulty down a bit and loved using the cheat mode but at least I could handle a few matches in a row. Anywho, I was a big Mortal Kombat fan back in the day and I don't mean to state the obvious but UMK3 was the ultimate version of Mortal Kombat at the time. It almost had all the characters in one game, minus one or two, used the Mortal Kombat 3 engine, which is probably my favourite of the series, and had a butt ton of fatalities for each character. I played this game so much that I've nearly ruined my cart. A lot of the contacts seemed to have burnt off or something, and I would often get a blue screen of death on a goddamn Mega Drive game. I should really replace my copy, but like all the best games for old consoles, price isn't one I'm particularly fond of paying. The Mega Drive had a lot of side scrolling beat em ups, and Alien Storm is no exception. The thing that makes it stand out for me are the playable characters. They all play the same in reality, but they have different weapons, so it's really a choice of whatever tickles your pickle that day. It also makes it interesting for two player games where you and a friend would have to fight over who uses the flamethrower. 
I used to go around to a friend's house after school quite often, and this would pretty much always be a game that we have a few shots on. The levels aren't particularly long, but you don't get too many lives to make it through the game, which is really my only gripe with it. Even on easy mode, I couldn't make it to the end. Still, the short levels and different styles of stages, and I guess the difficulty of the game, gives it a good replay value, and makes it easy to just pop on and have a quick 15-20 minute game. Another huge part of my childhood was the Power Rangers. This made getting up for school a lot easier and would give me something else to play other than video games. I loved the movie at the time and while it hasn't aged very well, I can still see the charm that made me enjoy it. The game that went alongside it is a great beat em up. I used to play this a lot with my little brother but it was basically me clearing the screen to make sure he didn't die and stayed in the game. You know, bonding and all that crap. The game isn't too long but I find it easy to replay over and over again. It features the rangers from the movie and also does this weird flashback thing that wasn't in the movie that lets you play as Jason, Zack and Trini. Sadly, no Green Ranger or original Megazords, but at least it has the Tiger Zord. The music fits perfectly and has a strong Power Rangers feel to it. I did a bit of research and found that the soundtrack is just digitised versions of music that Ron Wasserman created for the TV show. Go figure. I've done a full Streets of Rage series review which you can watch after this vid if you like and even if I hadn't done that video I really don't know what to say that hasn't been said before. For me this is damn near close to being a perfect game. I don't want to say that it is a perfect game but I really can't think of any faults. It features one of my favourite gaming soundtracks by the legend that is Yuzo Koshiro. You can really sense the late 80s, early 90s influences in the tracks and just really worked with the level design and the time the game was released. This one really should be on the iPod. The game is just as good in single player as it is two player. It isn't too long and it isn't too short. Difficulty isn't too intense unless you're a mentalist and want to put it on mania during single player. I used to do that back in the day but I tried it not so long ago and died near the end. If you're new to the Mega Drive, or if you've never played a beat em up, or Streets of Rage, or maybe another Streets of Rage put you off the series, you really need to give this game a shot. Of course there's to be a Sonic game on this list, and while Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles were released 8 months apart, they're basically one game. The game had to be split due to the sheer length of it, and the fact that it couldn't fit on one cart. I just can't play one of these by itself, they both have to be locked on each other. I love the save feature that is enabled from Sonic 3. The game is pretty big with 14 levels with 2 acts each and the ability to collect the super emeralds once all the chaos emeralds have been collected, so being able to save and take breaks etc is always welcomed. Once you have the super emeralds you can become hypersonic or knuckles and replay levels which is a fun experience. My favourite level to replay is the doomsday zone which comes from Sonic and Knuckles. You play only a super or hypersonic unless you do the old cheetah rooney and have to make your way forward and defeat Egg Robo, remembering to keep your ring count up as this is your fuel for becoming supersonic. Not a tough level by all means, but I find it fun and the music is a track that will stick with me forever. I love how much more mature the graphics look compared to the earlier games. Things look more edgy and less rounded. It's almost as if it matured with me. Yeah, that never happened. The music, as is with most games on this list, is another of my favourite soundtracks. I mean, it all makes sense now knowing that our over-friendly, kid-loving MJ had some part in the creative process on these tracks. There's clearly some stuff in there that was used on the Dangerous album. Do a search here on YouTube for it, it's pretty interesting stuff. So those were my favourites for the Mega Drive, and I know there's so many more classics that could've and should've been on the list, but attention spans are only so long. Let me know in the comments what some of your favourites are, because I'd love to do a follow up in the future, and it'd be great to remind me of some games I might have forgotten. As always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.